Let's work through an example of computing a curve integral of f over a curve c ds. Our function f of xy is equal to y over x, so we have a you know, standard function of two variables, and our curve c is given by the parameterization r of t equals t to the fourth comma t cubed. So these are really the x and y coordinates, and so this is a picture of our curve C in the XY plane. Now when I plug in T equals 0, I get both X and Y equals 0, so I'm at the origin. When I plug in T equals 2, I get this point, which I can check is at 16 comma 8. And so the curve C runs from the origin out to this point, as T runs from 0 to 2. Alright, so the integral of FDS over C if I have a parameterization of C where T runs from A to B can be rewritten in terms of the parameterization as, as such. So F of XY becomes F of R of T which basically just means I plug in X and Y as these functions of T into this formula and then I have to multiply by the magnitude of R prime of T and that's the function I have to integrate DT. So what happens here is, is I have this coordinate free presentation of the integral and using a parameterization I turn it into a single variable integral in terms of the parameter t. Alright so let's go through this process. So we need to know r prime of t. So we can just compute it using these formulas and we get 4 times t cubed and then 3 times t squared. Okay, and remember that the derivative of r gives me a tangent vector to the curve. So this is r prime, and r is really pointing, is the, is the vector that points to the curve. So this is, this is the situation we have, r describes the points and r prime gives me tangent vectors. So the magnitude of r prime of t is then uh, the square root of 16 t to the sixth plus 9 t to the fourth. And I can factor out the t to the fourth, and I take the square root of that, I get t squared. So I get a t squared and then 16 t squared plus 9. Okay, so that's uh, one factor of the integrand. And the other factor comes from plugging in the parameterization r of t in for x and y. So f of r of t is f of, well, x is t to the fourth and y is t cubed. And so I get y over x is t cubed over t to the fourth. And so f of r of t is 1 over t. All right, now the bounds for our parameterization are, are t equals 0 to t equals 2. And so now we're, we're ready to actually compute this single variable integral. So we have the integral from 0 to 2 of f of r of t, which is 1 over t, and then times the magnitude of r prime of t which we found was t squared times the square root of 16 t squared plus 9. So this is the function that we have to integrate with respect to t. So the moral of the story is that we use the parameterization of the curve to write the, this curve integral in terms of a single variable integral. And then now we're doing single variable calculus. So we have this t cancels out with a t squared to leave me a t here and then now I can do a u substitution u equals 16 t squared plus 9 and it's straightforward to check that what I'm going to get here is I'm basically off by du is going to have a 32 t and I just have a t so there's going to be a 1 over 32 and then 
that's going to be 16t squared plus 9 to the 3 halves power. First, I've got to divide by 3 halves to make that work. And so that's going to be, the, that's going to be my antiderivative, and then I'm evaluating that as 0 to 2. So I get 1 over 48. And then when I plug in t equals 2, I get 64 plus 9 is 73 to the 3 halves. And then minus, when I plug in 0, I get 9. And 9 to the 3 halves. So the square root of 9 is 3, and cubed is 27. So in the end, we evaluate this this curve integral, the integral of FDS over C, to be 1 over 48 times 73 to the 3 halves minus 27. And again, the, the method is to use a parameterization of the curve to rewrite this, this curve integral of a curve in the plane in terms of just a single variable integral in terms of the parameter t. And so we had to calculate the derivative, its magnitude, and then plug in the parameterization in for my function f of x, y, and that gave me an integrand that's a single variable function of the parameter t. And then with a little bit of straightforward single variable calculus, we could compute the answer.